the National Assembly, that is uh, Madam Malungo Chisangano. Okay, so that's the motorcade that uh, just came with the Vice President. Okay, so uh, she was greeting the guard of honor there. Okay, so she's being welcomed by uh, the deputy, uh, by the first uh, deputy speaker of the National Assembly. As you know that uh, there are uh, some changes right now in uh, Parliament. So there she walks majestically, uh, dressed in uh, chitenge material, and it looks uh, so colorful. Such that I'm color blind, but I think if I had, I had to tell you the colors that I'm seeing, that should be uh, probably yellow uh, mixed with uh, blue. And I can see her uh, making salutes and saluting uh, to both uh, the people that have lined up, you know, uh, just to watch her pass and enter uh, the chambers. So she's uh, going ahead uh, straight into uh, the chambers, uh, the National Assembly uh, chambers. That's where uh, the Vice uh, President, our honor, Mrs. Mutali Nanumango, is now heading to. So after... Uh, the arrival of uh, the vice uh, president, uh, we expect uh, the president himself uh, to be here. I think uh, this should be in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, the Republican president, uh, Mr. Haka Inde Hitzlema, will be arriving at uh, the National Assembly of Zambia. And uh, uh, thereafter, we expect to see, uh, of course, other than him, we will expect to see the service chiefs that will later on arrive. So this is what is going on right uh, at uh, the National Assembly. So we are yet to see uh, the Republican president, uh, President Haka Inde Hitzlema, I think it should be between five and ten minutes it should be uh, right here because i can hear that uh, he has just started off from uh, state house and uh, uh, end time from now he will be gracing his presence within uh, the national assembly building so we can see that uh, security has uh, been uh, placed tight within the premises and uh, perhaps um, my camera can show where a uh, security man has been uh, placed we have uh, so many men in uh, uniform from, as you can see just uh, right here, who are also following uh, the proceedings at uh, the National Assembly uh, building. We are broadcasting live from uh, the National Assembly, and if you're watching, you're watching uh, Spring TV, always uh, making sure that uh, we are at uh, the source of uh, your story, giving you first-hand uh, information 24-7, uh, and this is exactly what is uh, going on right here. My name is Rose Funda. We continue giving you updates and uh, making sure that uh, we let you uh, know things as uh, they come. Of course, uh, the Republican President, uh, Mr. Akainde Ichlema, will be accompanied by uh, the first lady, Mrs. Mutinta, and uh, she'll be as well right here, and uh, she'll be ushered in uh, the chambers, and obviously she will have to sit on the left side of uh, the president's seat. That's uh, the first lady, and uh, of course, it is good uh, to see that uh, the first lady and uh, his excellence, the Republican president, uh, will be uh, right here attending parliament for the first uh, time in his so Zambia has uh, really made a history and, uh, you know, it has followed the uh, clear and uh, safe, of course, a transition of uh, power from the patriotic front to the United Party for National uh, Development. Of course, the UPND has come with uh, its uh, alliance partners. So this is what is going on right here. Uh, as you can see that the mood with regards to the people around is so hyper and uh, people are are expecting more from uh, the president's uh, speech and thereafter a debate will be opened uh, after the president gives uh, the speech you know uh, parliamentarians will have uh, to debate uh, the presidential speech and later on what we expect is another 
colorful event where budget uh, will be presented before uh, this very house right here. So let me just uh, look at uh, what is going on. Like I said, that there is a representation from uh, various traditional uh, ceremonies and uh, traditional uh, dancers who are right here, you know, uh, building and molding the mood of people at uh, National Assembly uh, building. So there are other events that will obviously have to take a place inside the parliament. Inside parliament, uh, we'll be seeing uh, members of parliament, you know, as well. Uh, I think at uh, uh, probably uh, 10, 30 somewhere, there are 10 hours, uh, the president should have uh, started with uh, his uh, speech. So members of parliament will be as well uh, in parliament, inside parliament, to listen to uh, the presidential uh, speech. So the, uh, the arrival of uh, the president and the first lady will be received by uh, the service chiefs. And after the presidential uh, um, and mounted escorts have moved off, uh, the president's proceeds. After the, uh, rather after the mounted escorts have moved off, uh, the president will proceed to the uh, salute saluting dais where he is accorded uh, the presidential salute. So right now we've got a visual uh, and I can see that uh, there is uh, an escort. Could this be, uh, okay, there's a motorcade. Could this be uh, the president now? Okay, let's see if it is uh, the Republican president uh, that has uh, finally arrived. Uh, of course, yet to confirm if it's the president or if it's uh, well, the service chiefs. So I'm yet to confirm that uh, once I uh, have a visual on, uh, but it seems like it's uh, the Republican president. Because according to the program that I have, after the arrival of uh, the vice president, we expect, uh, you know, his excellence, uh, President Haka uh, Indehizlema, to arrive right here at uh, National Assembly. So we are waiting to see. Okay, so these are service chiefs that have uh, just arrived. Okay, so these are the service chiefs. Yes, and the service chiefs will have to welcome President Haka in the Islema when he arrives. So uh, the service chiefs have just arrived right about now. As you can see, the proceedings and uh, the way uh, the event is unfolding. So these are the service chiefs that have just arrived at a National Assembly building. And of course, uh, they will have to welcome President uh, Haka in the Islema. So like I said earlier, I think in the next uh, five minutes, uh, the president should be arriving uh, right here because uh, we've got an information that he has already started off from uh, State House, you know, uh, coming uh, right here. So I'm sure if uh, some of you are using the greatest road, you will find that uh, the road has been uh, uh, blocked to some extent. And uh, that is because uh, the security wings are trying to ensure that, uh, you know, there is uh, a smooth uh, pathway of uh, the Republican president as he comes to uh, address parliament for the first time in history. So after the president arrives, of course, he will arrive with uh, the first lady, uh, Madam Mutinta. After the presidential and uh, the mounted escorts, 
have moved off. The president will proceed to the salute, saluting dais, and uh, that's the saluting dais that you are seeing just right here. So the saluting dais, dais that's uh, the thing that uh, the shelter you are seeing up front, uh, just there in front of uh, the guard of honor. So you will have uh, to, uh, to, to probably uh, say a hi to uh, the guard of honor in a certain way. And as the president uh, is accorded uh, the presidential salute to the president's uh, standard will be broken and uh, a 21 gun salute will be fired by the salute troop of the Zambia Archery. At the same time, there is there will be a fly past by the Zambia Air Force. So that will be expected right uh, after uh, the president uh, gets into uh, the uh, days. So in case you just joined us right about now, you are watching a Spring 24, that's a Spring TV, and you are watching us live from National Assembly building. And what we are having is a ceremonial opening of the first session of the 13th National Assembly. So this is what is being expected. Of course, uh, the security wings will have uh, to show and demonstrate, uh, you know, uh, those uh, beautiful things that they do, which uh, have, you know, a fly past and, uh, you know, uh, the guard of honor bounded by the second battalion of uh, the Zambian Re regiment who also uh, showcase uh, some of uh, the uh, things that they do. So there is that uh, protocol and procedure that is followed whenever uh, the president, uh, the sitting president, uh, you know, uh, comes uh, to uh, parliament. So the president, when he comes, of course, he will definitely have uh, to inspect the guard of honor before he could uh, head uh, straight into uh, the chamber. So the president will, uh, of course, inspect the guard of honor and will receive the second presidential salute. Thereafter, the guard of honor will, ma uh, will march. And uh, it will be also followed by a fly past by the Zambia Air Force. So indeed, it is a special day for everyone, as you can see. It is a special day for everyone, and everybody is excited, especially that uh, so many promises have been made by uh, the new president, uh, President Haka Inde Hislema, and every Zambian wants to hear more uh, to uh, President, Ed, uh, president uh, Haka Inde Hislema's uh, speech and, of course, uh, follow or mark uh, what, uh, what he will say, if at all, it will match with, of course, you know, uh, the implementations. Because Zambians say that uh, it's easier to uh, promise something, but implementation in Zambia has been a huge uh, problem. But uh, President Haka Inde Hislema has promised to fix it all, and uh, we'll have to watch. If you followed uh, the briefing by the UPND spokesperson, uh, Mwitwa, he was saying that, uh, you know, uh, Zambians must make sure that they get their pens and mark the scores that uh, President uh, Aka Inde Hislema will make uh, henceforth see, uh, from this particular day uh, and, uh, you know, as we move on. So a lot of things are expected uh, to change. Uh, President President uh, Haka Inde Hizrema has promised a lot of uh, changes that will take place. As we have seen that even when he pronounced his cabinet, you know, uh, from there several things also have been changed. We have uh, new uh, ministries that have been formed and uh, those uh, new ministries in parliament, um, they are subjected to ratification. So ratification of parliament will just require a few majority rule uh, of vote and parliament to assure that uh, uh, these are pronounced, the new pro newly pronounced uh, ministries can also uh, begin to exist and to function. So this is what is going on. So right now, we are all waiting for the Republican president himself uh, to be uh, right here.
The parade is uh, being uh, mounted, of course, by the second battalion of uh, uh, Zambia. Well, I can see that uh, now uh, the president. I think it's about time that the president has just uh, arrived. I can see a visual right here. And this is where I was expecting the president uh, to uh, come from. So that's uh, the escort that you are seeing right here. And uh, of course, uh, this is his arrival. So let me see if now uh, that's uh, Egoan. Of course it is him, of course, arriving right about now. So this is what we are saying. Uh, once he reaches uh, the dice there, he will have to be uh, received by uh, the service chiefs. And the service chiefs, I can see that uh, they are in, in, in position already, just waiting for his arrival. Okay, so I can see that I'm being blocked a little bit, so we'll have to move a little bit so that we can have a clear shot and a clear view of uh, the Republican president, Mr. Haka Indehijlema, who is uh, just uh, arriving right now. So the president has just arrived, and uh, this is what uh, we are seeing uh, right now. So uh, the service chiefs uh, will uh, welcome uh, the president. Okay, so there we go. There we go. That's the escort that uh, the president has. We can see that, uh, of course, a BMW vehicles, uh, you know, branded Zambia police with, of course, horses. Okay. And uh, this is what is meant by the ceremonial <laughs> opening of uh, our parliament. Okay, so that's Ego One, if you can see. Okay, so we are waiting for the Republican president uh, to uh, come out of uh, his uh, vehicle. That's uh, the ego there that you can see. There's an ego on uh, that uh, uh, vehicle that is just up front. Okay, so let's let's move a bit in you know up front and just uh, get closer because I can see that uh, some uh, you know we are having some obstructions uh, right about now. So this is what exactly is going on. So because of the obstructions, let's just move a little bit and uh, show you what is going on. Of course, you can see that uh, the media are all here, different uh, media houses uh, represented here, just to come and uh, you know see uh, what is going on and how uh, President Hislema will uh, officially open. Uh, the first session of uh, the, uh, the first uh, session of the Tinith National Assembly uh, right here. Okay, so the president is about to uh, come out of uh, uh, you know the presidential uh, motorcade, and there he steps out. Okay, that's uh, uh, the uh, bodyguard, I'm sure. Yes, the famous one. Okay, and uh, there the door of his motor arcade has just been opened. A wonderful uh, royal wave. And is accompanied by uh, the first lady, Madame Mutinta, and uh, the service chiefs are just right there. Uh, okay. So, the service chiefs are right here, okay. Okay, so that's uh, praise.
that every Zambian, every Zambian child must get the education. And also, he does value education because it's very key when it comes to economic development. I mean, you need, you know, children, you need uh, citizens that have the skills and the education for them to apply into the economy, to grow the economy and contribute in various sectors of the economy. The president has been accorded a presidential salute and we will go into the proceedings of the day and I know that everyone is awaiting what will take place and what he will say in his speech. Yeah, his excellency. Proceeded to uh, the saluting guys. And that's the ritual at Parliament that is going on. Okay, so that's... Uh, the God of Honor. So. So, uh, President Standard is broken and uh, now a 21 gun salute is ongoing. So those guns you hear, that's the 21 uh, gun salute that is being uh, given to President Hakai de Hizlema.
Mr. President, your inspection is over. Permission to carry on. So, so. Permission for the parade to march and fly past, Mr. President. So, so.
uh, Spring 24 TV. My name is Wos Funda, and I've been with you just to take you through uh, to uh, the first session of uh, the 13th National Assembly right here as it has been happening just live. So I'll have to take you back to the studio, and the studio will have to take it up uh, right about now. So everybody is seated, and uh, parliamentarians are in the chambers, and everybody awaits to hear the speech from the Republic, uh, Republican president, from the president of the Republic of Zambia. And of course, we'll have to hear reactions thereafter from uh, different uh, stakeholders. From me, Wos Funda, I have to take you back to the studio. What they have planned, actualized here, just shows how united the country is to have all these people here. And I know that many people couldn't hear the cheers when we did get the traditional welcome for yes. the president. Everyone in the grounds of parliament was cheering and excited that he has come. But like you say, the One Zambia, One Nation, yes. obviously taking stage as part of the president's vision mm. for the country and you can see him there being ushered into the waiting room where he will be able to sign a book that shows that he is welcome to the parliament mm. grounds the speaker's book is a book that welcomes you to the parliament grounds to show yeah. that the president has been here so he will be signing that we have also seen that he is accompanied by the first lady madam mutenta hichlema who he speaks so highly of when he talks about family unity mm -hmm. and how people, spouses, families should support each other, support each other's dreams. And you can see her here supporting him as he walks into Parliament to give his maiden speech. Mm. I, I can also anticipate that that is also going to make up his speech uh, on the need to uh, cement the family ties uh, and also what is so early on the performance that did exhibit Zambia's uh, culture uh, is going to, I can imagine, is going to be part of, uh, of his uh, speech this uh, morning uh, during the ceremonial opening of uh, the first session of uh, the 13th National Assembly because culture is very important, uh, you know, uh, Chile. When you talk about uh, the need to apply yourself as a citizen fully to the, uh, you know, uh, national development agenda, um, it, it, it's 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 embedded in our culture that we play a part. And early on, you were, you know, sharing the rich history behind the building of this uh, infrastructure, you know, the Parliament uh, House. And you're talking about the fact that look, it was uh, um, a, a, a very, you know, huge. Um, you know, indication of how Zambia is uh, is, uh, is 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 dedicated. Each and every citizen, uh, you know, contributing in a way to coming up with this particular building. So it tells you how uh, Zambia must be united. But again, it gets back to our culture because as Zambians, unity is our is in our DNA, so to speak, isn't it? And I think that the president is going to talk about that as he addresses these men and women in the chambers. 104 guests have been invited here at Parliament buildings to witness the maiden speech for the president. Many issues to be addressed and you can see the cosmopolitan grouping that is here in Parliament from the corporate world to ordinary citizens to parliamentarians themselves and obviously a huge mandate weighs on their shoulders and the president did speak about not just representing your constituency but also representing the greater good for Zambia. So if you are MP for a particular area, when you think about development, hmm. think about it for the greater good of Zambia. So much as in as far as talking points will be coming to the fore. The entrepreneurs, the young people are excited about to listen to what plans he has, especially that a ministry, Brian, hmm. has been set aside and it will be ratified by Parliament in due course, but set aside for small and medium entrepreneurs, one of the issues that was Absolutely. in the manifesto being actualized. Mm. That, that's a good point you raised, and I mean the establishment of that uh, ministry uh, does spark growth when it comes to the uh, you know entrepreneurship uh, you know uh, area of uh, the country's uh, you know economy. Because we've been talking about the fact that look, those entrepreneurs have brilliant ideas, and, and many times you and I, in you know, the course of our work, we interact with uh, you know people that would huge 
business ideas, but they don't seem to have uh, the uh, you know the support system, to, so to speak, in terms of you know the resources, financial resources, uh, loans from from banks and things of that sort. That ministry, I think, will address those issues. Uh, and also, we've seen entrepreneurs who really have uh, you know faced difficulties in finding you know uh, markets out there. You know uh, when they come up with their uh, their, their goods and, and services. Uh, there is, uh, you know, a, 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 a barrier in terms of accessing the huge markets out, out of Zambia in in in, in Zambia. So this ministry uh, is going to be key in that in that regard in addressing these issues that uh, continue to to hinder growth as far as the SME sector is concerned. And and uh, like you mentioned earlier on, away from the issue of uh, uh, you know entrepreneurs and things of that sort, you mentioned the very interesting part about this parliament, the backbenchers. Are now in government, and 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 those who were, you know, uh, in government in the previous, uh, you know, um, uh, parliament, are now, you know, backbenchers. It's going to be very interesting to see how it's going to pan out as far as, you know, offering checks and balances. But the president has said that he's extremely, you know, ready to receive checks and balances. Um, and he did, uh, you know, indicate uh, on several occasions that this is healthy for a democracy. When you've got people that criticize you, uh, you know, and and tell you, look. This decision may not be, be, be the best decision. You need to look at these things. And as you can see earlier on, uh, the, uh, right now, as a matter of fact, the president uh, signing into the, uh, you know, into the book here at, uh, the, uh, in the office of uh, the speaker, uh, the visitor's book, just indicating that, uh, look, you know, um, I've been here and I'm here right now. Mm. Um, and, and, and this, again, uh, does uh, come very, very um, you know, interesting because many young people are they don't appreciate what happens in parliament and perhaps uh, the media must do a lot to try and sensitize young people on, on on this ceremony and 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 just the concept of of parliament in in itself isn't it a big role the parliamentarians have and when you see the president visit parliament it signifies the will of governments to see that everyone is in sync despite of where they come from in ensuring service delivery for the Zambian people. Parliament is committed to effectively and efficiently carry out its legislative oversight representative and budgetary functions and all these components will be included in the president's speech today. Earlier on Brian we did speak to the manufacturing sector yeah. in, in as far as the president is concerned, Ezekiel Sekele, he did speak about 8% being contributed to the manufacturing center, sector currently, but in the next year, 10 years, a projection of 30% is expected. Of course, we'd like to push it to more. Yeah. There is a lot of potential in the manufacturing Absolutely. sector. And when you think about the new ministries that have been introduced, like technology and what they can do to help boost the manufacturing mm -hmm. sector, gives you a reflection of what the president keeps on saying that when where one ministry ends the other one starts and teamwork must be observed so mm. that must be going through the minds of most of these parliamentarians as they take these important seats it is uh, the manufacturing uh, you know sector does expect from these members of parliament you can see on your screen right now to do something about the um, the contribution that is coming from the manufacturing sector uh, you mentioned that they are contributing only eight percent to the country's GDP uh, now that's more uh, well I, I mean we do not uh, you know um, ignore the fact that this is out of some great effort but we can do better when you look at the vision 2030 it does project and demand that uh, you know at that particular time the the country's uh, manufacturing sector must contribute something like you know 36 percent uh, so it tells you that we have got a lot of work to do because 2030 is uh, is, is almost is, is near it's just around the corner yes. um, and and therefore uh, these members of parliament must try and do uh, you know, something about that. They must try and find solutions to uh, make up for a slight delay that we have suffered as far as getting the best out of the manufacturing industry. But in that, in that, in that, uh, you know, narrative, in that conversation, uh, Chileshe, you want to bring in the issue of value addition that we spoke mm -hmm. about earlier on. Uh, the manufacturing industry. Um, needs to have policies that support it to, uh, you know, to to grow um, and be able to to embrace and actualize, you know, a value addition, which does account for huge benefits uh, in terms of job creation, in terms of uh, you know, a growing the country's economy. Because when you've got a manufacturing industry that is that is thriving, you you grow your middle class. 
and then it uh, helps you know your citizens have the buying power to be able to buy the services and goods that the industry is uh, you know um, uh, are bringing to the fore so manufacturing and value addition uh, should be the composition should be on the lips and the mi on, on the minds of uh, these, uh, you know, members of parliament. And as the first time being here in the parliamentary grounds, as the first time addressing parliamentarians as the president of Zambia, you will note that the president has spoken about policy consistency, Absolutely. and that's one issue that he continues to talk about to attract investors to the country. Policy consistency is key. He has also spoken about the multi-facility economic zones and how they have to be maximized in terms of potential to ensure that they also contribute to Zambia's economy. I think the mm. tone that has been said, Brian, is yeah. really that it's time to work, it's time to put in the work, it's time to work for the nation and ensure that every contribution goes to the well-being of the Zambian people. This is the first time he's coming into the parliamentary grounds, coming to address the parliamentarians, and it you may think it is one of the most important addresses that he will make. We know he has spoken on various occasions and that has also set the tone for what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, policy consistency is on the mind of the president. Yeah. He's spoken about the agriculture sector and how small and medium and uh, small and medium farmers need to grow from where they are to become high scale farmers that also contribute to the economy. He has also spoken about the need Need for quality health care and in that regard we do know that Honorable Sylvia T. Masebo is the new health minister. He comes at a time when the COVID pandemic is still on. He comes at a time when people are talking about quality health services and the need for the Ministry of Health to provide this for every Zambian. So that is something that probably he will speak about when it comes to health and how important it is. A healthy citizen is a productive citizen at the end of the day. Without a doubt. And, and experts will tell you that uh, it's high time that uh, we change the way we look we look at uh, the Ministry of Health. We should now look at the Ministry of Health as an economic, you know, uh, you know, uh, ministry, so to speak, because, like you mentioned earlier on, uh, it is extremely uh, important to ensure that, uh, you know, people can be able to be healthy, uh, and people can look as the, as the way the, the, you know, the First Lady is looking. Very, very beautiful this, this morning, as always, when she uh, you know, makes a public appearance. She always wins uh, public acclaim in, in that respect, but also because, look, the, the husband, for him to be where he is today, uh, she has played a huge role uh, in, in giving him, uh, uh, you know, uh, encouragement to soldier on. Remember, he's, he was sent to jail on several occasions. And there were moments that were extremely, you know, you know, um, favorable for one to give up. And, you know, uh, the president, uh, you know, then in the opposition stood firm and remained resolute uh, and did maintain his path to the presidency. It's because of that woman you're seeing on your screen and on several occasions he's mentioned that, look, I am where I am today. I've managed to, uh, you know, calm the storm whenever he hits me because of uh, this beautiful woman that has been very supportive in, in, in my career. And, you know, a challenge to all the women uh, folk in the country to support their husbands and their boyfriends as well. The president did mention that. So it, 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 it's very important that as we go on, um, you know, the country mentioned earlier on the issue of uh, policy uh, inconsistencies that we've seen in the country. Now, the role of government is not to provide jobs, it's to make the environment very favorable for investment. And when your policies are inconsistent, it's a huge discouragement for players to come and invest. Because, let's face it, uh, government has owned, you know, industries in the past. They were sold because... Uh, you know, arguably, government was incapable of running these these, these industries, um, and and as you know, uh, the new government comes in, into uh, into power, as, as government is in power, right? The new government is in power. Um, there is need for uh, policies that will be uh, you know um, um, uh, uh, you know important in ensuring that the. Uh, the sector is attractive for investment. Investors won't come and uh, put their money in a country where policies are consistent. Today, you say there's uh, a, a, a zero rating on this, uh, on this, on this, uh, you know, undertaking. The next time you come, you say things have changed. It's, it's, it's a huge, you know, discouragement. So inside Parliament building, uh, we are witnessing a very colourful, uh, you know, uh, ceremony. The president is just about to enter the chambers, and uh, members of, uh, of Parliament await.
uh, the uh, you know grand entry of uh, the head of state into you know the chambers. Um, and this again, the drum does signify the fact that uh, you know culture is something Zambia is not willing to let go of. Uh, the country shall embrace you know the rich uh, culture and heritage that uh, you know the country has been known of for a long time so the president uh, entering the chambers let me just make mention also that as he enters the chambers this live broadcast is brought to you by etg as well as stan big and the broadcast that you are the time for the president to give the address and would just like you to enjoy as he walks in to the parliament building for the first time to give his maiden address to these parliamentarians for the vision he has for Zambia, what he carries and the future of this country. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It is a great honor for me to be here today to address this August House on the official opening of the first session of the 13th National Assembly. This session marks the beginning of my first five-year mandate as President of the Republic of Zambia. Yeah. And I'm honored to be the first President to address this August House in the presence of the first female Speaker of the House. Yeah. I thank the out Almighty God for giving me and the United Party for National Development the opportunity to serve the people of this great country. My profound gratitude goes to the people of Zambia for the overwhelming election victory and trusting me as their president. I'm truly humbled by the responsibility that you, the Zambian people, have placed in our hands. We, in turn, shall serve you diligently and in accordance with your aspirations. Madam Speaker, on Thursday, 17th June this year, a dark cloud befell our country. 
We lost our gallant founding father and first president of this great nation, Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda. We are grateful for the immense contribution to the liberation struggle of not only our country, but also other countries in the region and beyond. We as a people will miss him, miss him, and shall, shall forever be grateful to the almighty God for giving us such a great son of Africa. Barely three days after the death of our founding father, we lost yet another gallant Zambia. Our Chief Justice, Her Leadership, Mrs. Irene Chirwa Mambilema, who passed away on the 20th of June, 2021. We remember her valuable contribution to the judiciary and service to the nation. Additionally, our country endured further despair resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, where many of our loved ones passed away as a result of this pandemic. It is therefore important that this August House observes a minute of silence in honor of our late luminaries and the citizens who succumbed to the coronavirus. Thank you. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Madam Speaker, allow me on this auspicious occasion to congratulate you and the two deputy speakers on your respective election to superintend the affairs of this August House. Responsibility placed on your shoulders is enormous. Our people expect you to discharge your duties with impartiality, dignity, and honor. And I'm confident that you will execute your duties diligently and maintain the decorum of this house. I also congratulate all of you, all of you, I mean all of you, the re-elected, the re-elected and newly elected members of parliament on your election to represent the people of Zambia. The people of Zambia. All of the people of Zambia. All of the people of Zambia are the ones you should represent without exception. That's by way of emphasis. I equally congratulate you, honorable members, who have been nominated to this August House. All of you who have been nominated to this, this August House, you too are congratulated. The people of Zambia have placed great confidence in you. The people of Zambia voted for change. The people of Zambia voted for change. Yeah. Our people must begin to enjoy the fruits of this change. Yeah. Your presence in this house should therefore not be for personal gain. We must, we must all preoccupy ourselves with a call to duty and selfless service for the betterment of our country. You are expected to represent them effectively in order to contribute towards improving their livelihoods. Let us work hard and deliver to our people's expectations all the time. Let me take this opportunity, let me take this opportunity 
to pay tribute to the immediate past speaker, Dr. Patrick Mativini, and the two former deputy speakers, Madam Catherine Namgala and Mr. Mwimba Maram, for presiding over the business of the House during their term. I also commend the Clerk of the National Assembly, Mrs. Cecilia Nsenduluka Mbewe, and indeed her staff for the support rendered to the House during the 12th National Assembly. As a nation, we were happy that despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic during the fourth and fifth sessions of the 12th National Assembly, the leadership at Parliament was innovative and worked tirelessly to ensure that the business of the House was conducted in an effective and efficient manner. Thank you. Let me also pay special tribute to the former Vice President of the Republic of Zambia and leader of the government business, her owner, Mrs. Inonge Mutukwa Wina. Her contribution to the successful conduct of business of the House will always be appreciated. I am confident that the new Vice President I am confident that the new Vice President her honor her honor Mrs. Mutale Nalumango will certainly be equal to the task as leader of government business in the House. Madam Speaker, I'm happy to note that the August 2021 general elections were held successfully. Despite isolated instances of violence recorded before, during and after voting, the elections were generally peaceful. The overwhelming support of the Zambian people carried the UPND to victory. In the midst of enormous, in the midst of enormous efforts to suppress our freedom of movement and other democratic rights, we pledge to foster democracy. We pledge to foster democracy and allow all the rights and liberties that will be essential to thrive. We recognize with gratitude the smooth transition of leadership from the patriotic front to our government. I thank my predecessor, His Excellency. I thank my predecessor, his Excellency, Mr. Edgar Chagualungu, for facilitating a smooth transition. The African, the African continent and the world at large hold Zambia in high esteem for the maturity of our democracy. As, as Zambians, we should be proud. As Zambians, we should be proud. I commend the electorate. I commend the electorate who exercise their civic duty to vote for leaders of their choice in a peaceful manner. I commend the electorate who exercise their civic duty to vote for leaders of their choice in a peaceful manner. Their decision ought to be respected. Special appreciation, special appreciation goes to youth who turned out in large numbers.
to vote and bring about the change they so much desired. I also commend all political parties and independent candidates for participating in the elections. Allow me to also extend my commendations to the Electoral Commission of Zambia for enduring, ensuring that the elections were held in a conducive environment, especially amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. I further commend the electoral or election observers, the church, traditional leaders, and other stakeholders for the distinct roles they played during and after the elections. Madam Speaker, now that the 2021 elections are behind us, it is time for us to unite as a nation and focus our energies on developing our country. It is time for all of us to work together and take Zambia forward. It is time for all of us to work together and take Zambia forward. It is time, it is time to focus on addressing our common challenges as a people. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the United Party for National Development Government has a huge task ahead to turn around the economic fortunes of our country. Rebuilding our economy is top on our agenda. I shall repeat. Rebuilding our economy is top on our agenda. As this is what will deliver jobs and better livelihoods for our people all our people. We have indeed inherited an economy that is in dire straits and requires bold and decisive action to be taken to ensure recovery is achieved. We need to support, we need the support of every citizen to achieve our development agenda. Our administration will, therefore, create an environment in which every citizen will have the opportunity to participate in and benefit from the economic activities of our country. As we begin our first term in office, our administration will embark on a national development agenda to ensure accelerated economic recovery. Yeah. Our vision is to have a united and prosperous Zambia that will provide equal opportunities for all our people. We are determined to meet the basic needs of every Zambian and create a conducive environment for Zambia to become a prosperous middle-income country. We will implement policies to address the fiscal deficit while ensuring that confidence is restored in the markets, all the markets, trading and financial markets, all of them, all of them. I'm sure you've seen the changes already in the trading market. It is important to bring stability to our economy and accelerate growth. As we embark on the journey, it is cardinal that equality enhanced provision of equitable access to our economic opportunities to all our citizens, especially our youth. We will also enhance provision of adequate social services. Adequate social services. Indeed, we will further enhance the provision of social protection to the poor and vulnerable in our society. It is in this regard that the theme of my address is creating a united, prosperous, and equitable Zambia restoring economic growth and self safeguarding livelihoods. I shall repeat, it is in this regard that the theme of my address is creating a united, prosperous, and equitable Zambia, restoring economic growth and safeguarding livelihoods. Yeah. 
Madam Speaker, the theme calls on all of us to unite regardless of our political affiliation, ethnicity, religion, and indeed gender. We need to focus our attention on strengthening unity in our country. We need to focus on what unites us and not what divides us as a people. We are determined to usher in an era where politics are used to strengthen rather than to weaken our unity. We are determined to make our national motto, One Zambia, One Nation, a reality and not just a, a mere slogan. We all desire a prosperous and equitable society, don't we? The levels of poverty in our country are not acceptably high. We must end the vicious cycle of poverty and bring prosperity to all our people. We will work to reduce various forms of inequality and create a more equitable society. We will safeguard the livelihoods of our people, especially the poor and vulnerable in our society. We will provide equal opportunities for development to all our citizens across the country. Madam Speaker, the theme also reflects our desire to reverse the current economic downturn, as indicated. We will accelerate economic growth and create opportunities emphatically for all our people. We will create we increase access to quality education and health care, as well as water and sanitation services. In addition, we must sustain livelihoods, ensure affordable cost of living, affordable cost of living, as well as food and nutrition security for our people. Madam Speaker, the theme sets the tone and direction for our development agenda over the next five years. Our administration is determined to creating a united and prosperous Zambia state with equal opportunities, as said, across ethnic, I repeat, across ethnic, religious, and gender considerations in harmony, in a free but democratic society. Madam Speaker, our administration will develop a robust national development action plan for the period 2022 to 2026, course anchored on our manifesto. The eighth national development plan will reflect our economic transfor transformation agenda to deliver on the national vision and the expressions of our people, our citizens. The focus on the transformation agenda will be on attaining outcomes beyond economic growth to include greater inclusion and poverty reduction. Madam Speaker, I will proceed to outline the broad policy direction of my government for the next five years. I will do so under the following thematic areas. One, economic transformation and job creation. Two, human and social development. Three, environmental sustainability. Four, good governance environment. Good governance environment. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, economic transformation will be the overarching framework that will bring together interventions in the various sectors of the economy to create jobs and reduce poverty. To this end, government will implement policy measures to promote economic transformation at all times, particularly in the job-rich sectors of agriculture, mining, tourism, energy, commerce and industry, green economy, green economy, transport as well as information and communication technology. Our commitment to technological advancement in our country is evidenced by the proposed formation of the new Ministry of Technology and Science. 
This will allow policy development and implementation to spur development in the cross-cutting sectors and be a catalyst for economic growth and transformation. Additionally, the proposed Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Development is poised to foster the development support and growth of small, medium-sized enterprises. Very innovative, very innovative. Madam Speaker, the agriculture sector is critical in driving growth, creating employment opportunities and contributing to prosperity of our country. Our country has in excess of 40 million hectares of arable land. I shall repeat, our country has in excess of 40 million hectares of arable land. We have abundant surface and underground water resources. We have favorable weather conditions. We have readily available domestic, regional, and international markets for our agricultural commodities. Most of our people derive their livelihood from agriculture. The agricultural sector is, however, characterized by low productivity levels, insufficient agricultural support infrastructure, inadequate delivery of extension services, and poor land husbandry practices. In addition, there is inadequate value addition, high cost of finance, and high dependence on one crop, in particular maize. Investing in this sector therefore guarantees significant improvements in the lives of the majority of our people. To this end, the government will implement a comprehensive agricultural transformation program with the aim of making the sector a viable commercial undertaking. It is only through agricultural transformation that we will end hunger and improve nutrition while accelerated, accelerating economic growth. This will ultimately make our country food secure and a breadbasket for this region and beyond. Madam Speaker, we will restructure the sector to focus on activities and interventions that raise production and productivity in crops, livestock, and fisheries. We will create a conducive and stable environment which is the critical precondition for agricultural transformation. Madam Speaker, to improve agricultural production, productivity, government will ensure access to affordable agricultural inputs, such as fertilizer, chemicals, pesticides, and others. This will be achieved through the redesigning of the farmer input support program to transform it into a more cost-effective and sustainable intervention. This will promote cost efficiency and enhance private sector participation in the sector. We will partner with the private sector and establish agro-input manufacturing industries to, to produce these inputs for our farmers. This will promote a strong agro-dealer network across the country. We will create opportunities for small, large businesses in the production of agro-inputs. Madam Speaker, our administration will also promote crop diversification away from maize alone by supporting production of a wider range of cereal crops, legumes, fruit trees, roots, tubers, oil crops, as well as fiber crops. This will be achieved through improved extension services, mechanization, irrigation, value addition, and improved market access, as said already. This will, this will result in enhanced national food and nutrition security, as well as increased incomes for all our farms across the country. Madam Speaker, to promote and increase live, livestock production, government will focus on stock on stocking, on stocking and restocking, artificial insemination, as well as enhanced disease surveillance and control programs. Government will also facilitate research in animal breeding, disease prevention, 
and in nutrition. Further, further, livestock market promotion and value addition will be given priority. We will also support the construction and rehabilitation of livestock infrastructure, such as laboratories, service centers, breeding centers across the country. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, aquaculture is another area with great potential to provide opportunities for our people to venture in and improve their livelihoods. Luapula, others. Madam Speaker, aquaculture is critical. In this regard, we will promote the expansion and the intensification of fish farming across the country, especially among women and our youth. We will also promote production of fingerlings as well as establishment of hatcheries in the country to facilitate the growth of the aquaculture industry. This will not only improve the livelihoods of our people, but also meet the growing demand of fish in our country. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, to ensure a transformed agriculture sector which will effectively contribute to the restoration of economic growth and job creation, government will review the existing agricultural policies. Government will review the existing agricultural policies. We want to enhance production and productivity. The two are different, production and productivity value addition, marketing, as well as transparency and predictability of the export regime in the sector. Not frequent changes. Stability, predictable. Very important for business. Farming is a business. I therefore urge our people to seize the opportunities that exist in the sector so that, as a country, we are not only food sufficient, but also become the breadbasket of this region and indeed beyond. We have the capacity to do it. Let us therefore do it as a country, as a people. Madam Speaker, the mining sector will continue to play a key role in accelerating economic growth. Despite our long mining history and large mineral resource endowment, Zambia still face, faces a number of challenges in the mining sector. These include low levels of local participation and ownership in this sector, lack of transparency and accountability, as well as inconsistent fiscal policies. Mining is a long-term business. You don't change fiscal policies every other year. Investments will run away. So we shall stabilize this. Attractive, stable, consistent. And the rest you will see what will happen positively. Our administration is determined to ensure increased local participation and ownership in the sector. More jobs being created. More jobs being created as well as increased investment in the mining sector. Too many of our people depend on this sector. We shall support them. Harnessing the opportunities available in the mining sector will be crucial to our economic revival. We will ensure increased copper and other minerals production, as well as maximizing the benefits from various minerals such as gold, such as gold, such as gold, cobalt, manganese, among others. We will also promote further exploration as well as value addition. In this regard, we will offer appropriate incentives in this sector. We want to position the country to be a leading manufacturer of mineral value added products such as electro cables. Such as electro cables. Some of you remember Zamefa such as electrocables and copper-based 
accessories to meet the growing demand of such products. Very important. This will translate into more employment opportunities for our people, especially the youth. We will also increase earnings from exports of value-added products and ultimately enhance provision of public services to our people. Madam Speaker, to ensure predictability and sustained investments in the sector, government, in consultation with stakeholders, will review the mining tax policy framework, as indicated. In consultations, government in consultation with stakeholders will review the mining policy framework. This is aimed at introducing a stable mining tax regime necessary to increase investment in the sector. We will ensure that our people receive their fair share from our mineral wealth, not to be observers, not to be symbolic observers. Further, to enhance operations in the sector, government will review the existing institutional framework. With these measures in place and increased participation of our people, the mining sector is poised to contribute more towards the restoring towards restoring economic growth and improving the livelihoods for our people. For our people across the country. Madam Speaker, our country is endowed with abundant natural beauty, coupled with a rich cultural heritage. We have unique and pristine tourism sites that must be harnessed to benefit all our people. To this effect, our government will prioritize tourism as one of the key sectors for restoring economic growth, creating jobs, and reducing poverty. The potential of the tourism sector has, however, not been fully exploited. We all know that. The sector is characterized by fewer foreign visitors, shorter length of stay in the industry, we call it bed nights shorter bed nights, and a low number of domestic tourists. In the recent past, the sector has been severely affected, negatively of course, by the coronavirus pandemic. To reposition the sector amid the COVID-19 pandemic, our administration will put in place a robust program to facilitate a quick recovery in the sector. In the next five years, our administration will focus on attracting international tourists while promoting domestic tourism for enhanced sector resilience. Very important. We will put in place a robust tourism marketing strategy that will package a diversified range of tourism products such as traditional ceremonies, visual arts, culture, and heritage sites. We will also reduce the cost of doing business in the sector and some negative perceptions in the sector. I shall repeat. We will also reduce the cost of doing business and some negative perceptions in the sector, such as, yeah. such as perceived to be a yellow fever country when we have no yellow fever. We shall remove that. Thank you. Madam Speaker, with your indulgence, further, we will open up areas of great potential, such as the northern circuit to enhance inflows. We will construct and upgrade roads, as well as airstrips and airports to tourism sites to improve accessibility. Very important. These interventions, among others, will not only make Zambia a tourism destination of choice, but also contribute to restoring economic growth in the country. I therefore urge players in the sector to continue being creative and innovative in designing and packaging tourism products. I also call upon Zambians to take advantage of the numerous tourism sites across the country and participate in local tourism. Madam Speaker, 
Madam Speaker, energy is an important driving force for development in a, and a key enabler for, product, for productivity and industrial growth in our economy. Despite this potential investment in the sector, Plenty of this, this will ensure efficiency, sufficient capacity to power the economy and cushion the country from the negative effects of climate change on our current hydroelectricity generation. Madam Speaker, to attract more investments in the electric subsector, our administration will put in place cost reflective tariffs. We want more of our people to have access to electricity by scaling up investments in off-grid green energy solutions, key to agriculture, key to tourism, key to mining. We want to transform our country into an electricity hub for the region. We will therefore continue to invest in the expansion of electricity generation minimize transmission and distribution losses, as well as develop power interconnectors with other countries. Essential. Our aim is to create excess capacity needed to effectively end load, end load shedding, end load shedding, yeah. end load shedding yeah. with surplus power exports. Yeah. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, our aim is to create excess capacity needed to effectively end load shedding with surplus power for exports. Madam Speaker, to improve operations, efficiency, and financial sustainability of the National Power Utility Company, Zesco Limited, our administration will implement structural and financial reforms in that country, in that company. For emphasis, for emphasis, to improve operations, efficiency, and financial sustainability of the National Power Utility Company, Zesco Limited, our administration will implement structural and financial reforms in that company. Madam Speaker, with regard to the petroleum subsector, we will guarantee security of supply of petroleum products. In addition, government will undertake reforms in the fuel supply chain to reduce the landed cost of petroleum products. It shall be done. It shall be done. Our administration will progressively increase private sector participation in the procurement and supply of petroleum products. Yeah. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, our administration recognizes that trade and industry plays a key role in economic development as it is the bridge that connects producers of goods and services to the consumers. The sector has a huge potential for job and wealth creation, poverty reduction, and revenue generation for our country. Indeed, to this end, we will pursue an export-led trade strategy that will focus on continuous improvement in the competitiveness and quality of our exports. Government will place the private sector at the center of production and trade as an engine of growth. We are committed, we are committed to improving the relationship with the private sector and increase the participation of Zambian businesses yeah. in regional and global value chains. Yeah. This will enhance the contribution of trade and industry to job creation and economic growth. We will harmonize the trade policy with other relevant policies to effectively facilitate the flow of trade and investment in our country. We will put in place export financing support mechanisms to support Zambian businesses, Zambian businesses yeah. in their export agenda. Yeah. I'll be the chief salesman for all of you.
Zambians. In addition, in addition, we will work closely with the private sector in exploiting the opportunities available in the regional and international markets. Time has come for us to increase the share of Zambian businesses and products on the regional and global markets. Yeah. To ensure acceptance of Zambian products globally, regional of course, globally, local of course, government will strengthen the operations of the Bureau of Standards and related bodies to enhance their institutions, these institutions to appropriately certify products for quality. Yeah. We will also promote industrial innovation and creativity as well as support generation of intellectual property assets, yeah. Madam Speaker, to enhance the competitiveness of our local enterprises, we will reduce transaction costs. We will reduce transaction costs yeah. of doing business yeah. by streamlining the number of licenses yeah. and permits yeah. required to operate a business in this country, yeah. as well as the time it takes to obtain these licenses. Yeah. We shall cut this, no tolerance to delays. Delays job creation, delays economic growth. That's our mission. We will also promote the use of electronic registration and payment systems. In addition, we will facilitate Zambian-owned businesses Zambian-owned businesses yeah. to have access to affordable credit and finance yeah. in this country. Yeah. To keep the wheel of the economy constantly running, we will promote e-commerce. E we will promote e-commerce, which will facilitate a productive and efficient economy. This will create more employment opportunities for our people and provide convenience in accessing goods and services. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, with these measures in place, we will be able to fully exploit the various trade opportunities available in the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa. The Southern African Development Community, the African Continental Free Trade Area, the European Union, and China, among others. This will not only create job opportunities for our people, but also increase the revenue base for individuals. Individuals, that's how the economy works, for individuals, for households, for businesses, and ultimately for the national economy. That's how it works. Madam Speaker, government will focus on the micro small, medium enterprises, SMEs. We believe that this category of entrepreneurship is the main engine for job creation and indeed for wealth amongst our people. We must support our people to be wealthy. Then they can support the weak in society. Very important. This will be, the, this will be supported by broad-based education and skills development. We want to create a critical mass of entrepreneurs, especially amongst the youth and women. Yeah. Very important. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, transport is the backbone for facilitating economic activities, trade and development. It is the catalyst for economic development. Despite its importance, investment in transport infrastructure has been lopsided focusing on road transport at the expense of other options such as rail. Road infrastructure requires considerable high maintenance and rehabilitation costs relative to the railway infrastructure, which carries, anyway, heavier loads, heavier loads. Our administration will, therefore, focus on balanced, on balanced and integrated transport infrastructure development not skewed, balanced. We will invest in road transport infrastructure, of course. We will invest in railway infrastructure, indeed. We will invest in air transport infrastructure. 
very important. To achieve all of this, we will leverage public-private partnerships. We will leverage public-private partnerships. Madam Speaker, government will maintain, rehabilitate, and upgrade road infrastructure, particularly in rural areas, to open access. This will open up the country and link our farmers to markets, employees to their places of work, students to schools, colleges, and the sick to hospitals, amongst others. Very well coordinated. Very, very organized. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, recognizing the importance of the railway subsector, as said already, economic development, government is committed to developing the subsector to provide for a cost-effective and efficient means of transportation of bulk cargo. Bulk cargo. This is particularly important in view of our country's position as a land-linked country. Yeah not landlocked. Different perceptions. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, with regard to the air transport subsector, we will facilitate the modernization, integration, commercialization of airports to maximize returns on investment. Maximize returns on investment. Always doing projects at the right cost right value, <coughs> timely delivery, all the time, all the time, all the time. No corruption in this sector, zero. These measures will transform Zambia into a regional hub for road, railroad, and air transport. We are capable, we will do it. Madam Speaker, government recognizes the critical role that the digital and knowledge economy plays in enhancing productivity across all sectors of our economy. Digital transformation affects every aspect of human, social, political, and economic activities. It also presents huge opportunities for the developing countries, especially those that seek to industrialize like our own country, Zambia. To harness this potential, we will trans we will mainstream, to harness this potential, we will mainstream digital revolution in our national programs in order to tap into the talents and creativity of Zambians, especially the young Zambians, the youth. We can all see the transformation brought about by digital revolution in the provision of goods and services. This is particularly the case in sectors such as finance agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, manufacturing, information, wholesale and retail trade. We will exploit the increased use of digital platforms and delivery channels, and delivery channels such as automated teller machines, points of sale, and mobile money services, which have also enhanced financial inclusion, bringing the unbanked into the banking system. Very important. Most of our people are now enjoying the benefits of information and communication technology in their daily lives. This is particularly important under the COVID-19 pandemic environment, which has restricted physical interaction and changed the way we do things. We will therefore support innovation and creativity which offer homegrown solutions across all sectors of the economy. Madam Speaker, to support these and other innovations, we will provide relevant infrastructure to enhance connectivity and support investments in optic fiber and telecoms facilities for enhanced service delivery. We will also promote public-private partnerships in information and communications technology sector. Further, 
we will work towards managing telecoms costs and improving quality of services. I shall repeat that, it's very important. Further, we will work towards managing telecommunications costs and improving quality of services by creating an enabling environment for entrepreneurs, Zambian entrepreneurs in this sector. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, human and social development is essential to maintaining a healthy and skilled population. This demands that we improve the well-being of our citizens so that they can reach their full potential. To this end, improving access to education, access to education, I shall repeat, to this end, improving access to education, health, health, social protection, as well as water and sanitation services will be a preoccupation of our government in the next five years. To realize this aspiration, government will foster accelerated social transformation through the empowerment of our citizens. We will invest in the social sector so that our citizenry is skilled. Madam Speaker, we will invest in the social sector so that our citizenry <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We will invest in the social sector so that our citizenry is skilled, healthy, and empowered to participate in the social economic transformation agenda for the Zambia that we design. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, education, science, and skills development are cardinal to the attainment of our social economic development agenda. In the case of our country, Zambia, our education system at all levels of learning has deteriorated over the years. This calls for immediate action to restore our education system to international standards and best practice. Our administration considers education, science, and skills development as an equalizer to all our members of society. We will therefore realign the sector to ensure that it contributes to job creation and economic development. Madam Speaker, our administration will provide quality, I repeat, quality and equitable access to education for all. We will also ensure that the girl child has an equal opportunity to access education by addressing the challenges faced by female learners. Female learners. And there are many challenges. We are aware of this. The education curriculum, education curricula, education curricula will be reviewed to ensure that it is in line with the required artisan skills and our development aspirations and goals of our country. Emphasis will be placed on entrepreneurship, which will be aligned with the current social economic requirements in the country. We want to produce graduates with the ability to contribute to innovations to industry, create jobs and wealth. We want people who can work for themselves, not always depending on a salary until you retire. Our administration will also reform the higher education loan and bursary scheme. Very important. Our administration will also reform the higher education loan and bursary scheme. The reform is aimed at ensuring that learners who have potential to excel, especially the girl child, but are unable to afford to pay school or university fees, are supported. This, this will 
This will be, Madam Speaker, I'm using English. Thank you very much. I'm using English. Thank you very much. Children like mine do not need taxpayers' education support. But the children of the poor need that support. That's the English I'm using. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker,